All right, so here we go. Hello, um, Wes Purvis is gonna talk a little bit about architecture and how uh, MIST, how we feel MIST architecture um, is differentiated for our customers as well as how to design uh, for MIST uh, from an R perspective. And so, um, yes, Sam, you are right. Um, you have asked us many times around uh, Wi-Fi design and we've, we've kind of had some informal things. Um, and, you know, after last year's mobility field day, we, um, we you know, we started, you know, do some more formal things. And, um, you know, I, based on some feedback from you with, you know, the kind of, we started with the, just let's put down some recommendations on paper. Um, and uh, I think the word you used was anemic. <laughs> um, so we decided, hey, let's actually, let's let's kind of reimagine this. Um, and so, uh, I, uh, you know, almost every vendor out there has their version of a validated reference design or, um, oops, excuse me, a CVD. Um, uh, and uh, this is this is the missed version of that, right? It's it's not in a 500-page um, document form. Um, you'll find if you go to mistcom slash design uh, we have um, a kind of a video first um, uh, flow where um, we're not just trying to teach or give you some um, some RF uh, you know guidance you know do this you know if you design for this you do this um, you know that that is in there as well but it's really a framework of how do you design a, a wireless network um, you know there's things in here like um, you know, measuring wall attenuation and choosing your antennas. Um, so if I switch over uh, and show, this is live, right? If you miss.com slash design, this, we're launching this today. Um, and so the way that this is intended to be used, um, there's a, uh, on the landing page, this is, this is an intro video. So watch this, it'll give you a, um, uh, you, you know, summary of, of kind of how to use the site, but I'll, I'll walk through. Um, this is Misty. Uh, this is our, you'll, you'll see on every page, there's a cartoon. Um, and so Misty is the Mist personality. Uh, and then uh, there's kind of the uh, old, old school thinking, which is Stanley. Um, so if I click on, uh, if I click on get started, uh, this will take us to kind of the overview. And there's four, you know, there's, there's four pieces to this, which is the four, the, you know, the four phases of designing um, a, a wireless network. And so you, you have to, you know, you take your requirements, um, uh, you go into the design phase, design, uh, deploy, um, and then after you deploy, you know, how do you diagnose? Um, and so these are, these are, you know, this is the full framework. Um, and so just to kind of, um, you know, go through just a couple pages around, um, uh, you know, some, some, some of the things that I found interesting. Um, so, you know, it really all starts with the requirements um, and, uh, you know, our, our favorite topic of around, you know, your understanding your device types, your least capable, most important device types. If, if we go into design, um, this is where we actually pick out um, a couple of scenarios, like, you know, how do you design for um, a voice, uh, you know, how do you design for office, right? Which is typically, you would typically have a uh, voice and video. Um, and so there's, um, you know, there's a video in here um, uh, by Peter and, um, you know, it, it kind of goes through, um, you know, how you would design for an office environment. Um, and we, you know, we put some recommendations in here as well um, around designing for primary and secondary coverage. And there's, there's entire, pay, there's entire um, uh, videos on primary coverage, secondary coverage. Um, so really this is, if you don't know anything about Wi-Fi, if you're just getting into Wi-Fi, this is meant to be a resource for you. Um, if you're if you're designing for, you know, you're trying to deploy um, a, a warehouse that you've never done, or you you have a new um, you have a new office opening up, and you need to brush up on some you know some of your design considerations, this is a resource for you. Um, or if you're just looking for guidance for Mist, this is also a re uh, um, a resource for you. Um, and so, um, Sam, I apologize that it took us a while to get this out, but I hope that um, this is something that the community finds valuable and it's, it's out there, um, you know, for people to use and, and, and find value from it. So just to kind of, um, I want to spend a little bit of time um, around some of the, around how MIST architecture um, enables differentiation for us. So, you know, we obviously, um, you know, we were a cloud-based vendor um, and um, everything we do is cloud-based and, and it's our cloud, our microservices um, uh, cloud architecture, which enables us to do new things easily and quickly. Um, and so one of the things that is new and coming um, is called streaming uh, PCAP. Um, so if you're familiar with MIST, we have you know, obviously dynamic packet capture, um, uh, you know, which is the, the AP itself when there's a problem, uh, you know, connection problem, we're automatically gathering that packet capture so you don't have to do it and go back and, you know, go back in time. 
Uh, however, there are times when you may want to do a manual packet capture. Um, and so we've had that capability for um, a number of years. Um, however, what we are um, adding is the ability to stream that, that PCAP, uh, uh, the ability to stream that packet capture into the MIST UI itself, as opposed to doing a you know, start packet capture, hope that you capture the correct, you know, the correct frames, um, and then download that PCAP. Um, we'll actually stream it into the MIST UI. And so this is, you know, we're also refreshing the page here. So, you know, if I, if I come in here and just do, all right, I'm going to do a wired PCAP and let's say, you know, I want to capture, um, you know, IC, ICMP frames, right? I want to, I want to capture some ping frames. Um, and so I just choose ICMP. Um, there's, you know, a, a regular TCP dump expression builder that you can use as well. And I just hit start and uh, these packets will uh, stream, uh, you know, right into the MIST UI. And so there's a little bit of a summary that shows up. So here's, you know, IP, you know, this is an ICMP echo request. Um, and, you know, we do this for wired and wireless. Um, if you're familiar with missed wireless PCAPs or even wired, um, you don't necessarily need to choose the AP, you just choose your client and we'll track that client as it roams around. Um, uh, there's also been a um, uh, popular request of allowing for a uh, packet capture from our scan radio, the third radio, um, that is coming as well. Uh, that will be, uh, you know, in, in coming as part of the streaming PCAP as well. So this, this should be a nice enhancement for kind of uh, those day two operations as you're trying to troubleshoot the network. All right, and just moving on, um, provide a little bit of an up, uh, update on the frag attacks. Um, so frag attacks were a list of vulnerabilities that were announced in May, um, fairly substantial um, in terms of vulnerabilities go, um, uh, you know, from, from a scope of impact. Um, and so the, there were a number of vulnerabilities, the most wide, the, um, you know, the most severe um, uh, and probably the most applicable was a, um, was one that could be mitigated from the AP side. Um, and so uh, for um, our customers, we're kind of at a point now where 75% of missed APs have been upgraded to a fixed version. Um, I think this is just a phenomenal, you know, we couldn't have asked for a better adoption. And really it came down to how just the ease of upgrade, right? So uh, a lot of our customers have auto upgrade enabled. And so once we set that version to, you know, the, the frag attacks fixed version to um, as a version that's auto upgradable, um, you know, our customers just receive that new version and they didn't have to think about it. Um, for customers that want to manually uh, upgrade, uh, uh, that is, you know, certainly a valid option. Um, and so we have, you know, very low impact upgrades, whether it's just you want to, you know, how do you even simple things like how do you how do you um, you know validate or bless a new a new firmware version right uh, so for our customers what we usually recommend is you know pick a couple APs in a site or pick a single site um, and then do uh, you know five sites ten sites hundred sites you know whatever it may be um, you know our our you know one hundred fifty thousand AP customer um, they upgraded over the course of two weeks right one week to one week to bless the version one week to actually upgrade those 150,000 APs. They start with, you know, a, a, a handful of sites, then go to, a, you know, a couple hundred and then just do a, a couple thousand a night, right? And that's, um, you know, that's that's how we get to, um, you know, this ability to have our customers who have, you know, we're at, you know, 75% of our APs have been upgraded, um, which I think is just a phenomenal statistic. And, um, you know, it's, it's really the architecture that enables this this kind of statistic and, and have metrics around how many of our APs have been upgraded. And then just, you know, how, um, you know, I, we, we, we had a webinar on this topic around uh, last month um, around, um, you know, cloud in campus architectures and, and campus environments, higher education. Um, and so this slide has we've presented before, um, but just to kind of, you know, show it to this audience around a, a customer that refreshed their entire uh, college campus in four months. Um, it, you know, they replaced their Cisco APs with 10,000 missed APs. Um, so 10,000 APs deployed in four months, you know, is really all about the ease of deployment. Um, they had installers using the missed app, taking pictures, um, uh, placing the, uh, actually placing the APs on the map, um, just to kind of, you know, tasks that used to be done by a network engineer to be done by, uh, you know, uh, by the installers themselves. Um, they, uh, about 22,000 uh, peak concurrent clients. The way it's structured within MIST, they have some very large sites with a lot of APs and some very small sites with just a handful of APs. Uh, so it came out to be about 92 sites within MIST, um, the largest of which is 2,400, uh, over 2,400 APs. Um, and when you think about, you know, as you're, you know, you're 
if you were to do a controller design, right, this is where you get into, you know, what is my RF domain? What is my mobility domain? Uh, you know, what is my, you know, what does my site tag look like? This is where you, you know, this number of APs is where you start to have, um, you know, design considerations around how you actually, you know, logically break things up. Not really a concern with MIST. Uh, we can do the, you know, the very large and the very small. Uh, they're leveraging MIST Edge. Um, uh, they have eight missed edges across two data centers for uh, re uh, resiliency on campus and then four um, for their work from home. Uh, they, they heavily leverage the, um, the AP photo fix, uh, feature um, in the, in the, using the MIST app. This is something that if you're able to do it at the time of deployment, why not? And it's just so useful. Like if you're not going to go back and take pictures of your APs after you deploy them, most likely. But if you're doing it at the time of installation, it's an invaluable tool to have where you can actually just validate, hey, was this AP deployed where I think it is? Is it the, you know, behind event? Uh, just having that picture is so useful. Um, and so from a data uh, standpoint, we get about 7 million daily client events just from this one, one customer. Um, of those 7 million client events, 600,000 of them have a, have a dynamic PCAP. So this is a lot of data. It's too much to consume. Um, that's why we have Marvis. And so Marvis has distilled all that data down to five actions. These are, they currently have five open actions. Um, I think four of them are APs offline and one of them is an AP bad cable. Uh, so, you know, this is, this is how you take just an inconsumable amount of data um, and, uh, and distill it down to something actually useful and consumable. So um, uh, uh, two more slides for me. Um, one is around, um, uh, around just, a little bit more on Mist Edge, right? So um, Mist Edge is invaluable for this campus deployment. In general, it's invaluable for our campus deployments. Uh, it enables this extremely large, you know, seamless L3 mobility domain across the entire campus. Don't need to worry about um, VLANs and you know, spanning your VLANs. Uh, and the kind of the beauty here is we're decoupling our RF domain from our mobility domain, uh, and and. Uh, you know, so we can have mobility and, and kind of seg you know, from an RF perspective, if we want to segment, we can, if we don't want to, we can just have large RF domains. That's okay too. Uh, we use Mist Edge from work from home. Uh, it, uh, you know, we're able to form an IPsec tunnel um, and, and, you know, provision the APs very easily. Uh, and lastly is around upgrade. Last year on Mobility Field Day, I demoed uh, how to upgrade a missed edge and the speed of that. Um, that was a one single missed edge, kind of the worst case for upgrading. Um, we almost always deploy in clusters. And, and so um, when you actually upgrade a cluster of missed edges, the, the upgrade is quick and painless. In this case, just one ping loss, um, uh, you know, as the AP fails over to, uh, to the next missed edge in the cluster. And lastly, uh, for, the, for, for those CWNEs out there, um, uh, proud to announce uh, there is a significant discount for CWNEs um, around the live um, four-day uh, four uh, training course um, uh, offered by uh, uh, you know, Juniper Training. Um, and so if you're a CWNE, you, this applies to you. Um, uh, there are, um, I think four classes offered between now and the end of September. Um, and so, uh, if you've ever wanted to learn about, uh, MIST and Juniper, uh, at a significant savings to you, uh, this is your opportunity to do so.